Yes, first. <laughs> Congrats. I still need to reset the... Most streamer notification. Not done that Elmo 2009. Oh, I have been. Okay. Find the determinant of the GCD matrix. Okay. What is is, is that pronounced to Tittle tattle. Oh, it's the name of the dot above the eye that all the teenage girls replace with hearts. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> Should have been a crossword. Get my user ID on Discord. <sighs> it's one of his buttons. It's under advanced? No, that's just from his developer mode.
Do you notify students if you add their problems to units? Yes. Um, I will send an email saying thank you for your submission. I uh, either added it or didn't add it or whatever. Um, yeah, the problem is I just haven't had it. I've been so backlogged with stuff. Honestly, I think today is going to be another Python dev day. <laughs> uh, because I'm so backlogged. Uh, there's just so much code to write. I don't know why there's so much code this year. It's just like... Oh, too much code. Uh. Oh shoot, I actually want... Okay, this should work. I think, maybe? Maybe. Uh. Uh, how how do I make it? Uh, whatever. Um, I'll just try it next time. That's fine. <laughs> Close to the end stream redemption. Actually, what the heck? How? How is that possible? Is it going to recognize that the enhanced streaming? Uh, I don't know. Huh. <laughs> I'm like 10 XP. Actually, <laughs> If you're only off by a factor of 10, that's still pretty impressive. <laughs> Alright, that was a lot of requests. Uh, okay, how many are there? 40. Alright, I would uh, drop some big voice. Hey, anyone want to request IMO3? Because I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I still haven't actually done IMO3. <sighs> I'm gonna make Evan do your problem by holding his stream ransom. What? Well, if someone uses end stream, then I'm just like, oh, I guess I get a day off. This stream is hard work, you know? <gasps> Alright, I am O3. Automatically. I'm sure there's things that automatically click the, the like, bonus button. Alright, uh... Alright, how many are there now? There's 15. I'm gonna cut it down to 8 using RNG. So that they actually fit on the screen. So, sequence 1, 15, sort dash random. <laughs> well, we'll do it like this so it's all more obviously democratic. Um, oh, but I wanna keep IMO 3 because I need to do that eventually, anyways. Boop. <sighs> All right, uh, do I, let's delete from the tail. So, oh crap, <laughs> I didn't plan this. <laughs> Wait, so I wanna pick how many things I want to delete and then I wanna sort them in ascending order. So we're deleting like, let's delete. Oh. Let's, let's just do seven, okay. Oh, frick. It's not sorted numerically. No, try again. I actually should sort of reverse. Okay, so 14, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 
three, one. Also, to no one's surprise, I've done 11, 2011 G4. I've probably done 2012 G4 as well, actually. Yeah, okay. Uh, try again next time. <laughs> okay, I might have over-deleted. I didn't... <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> We're doing it live. Oh, uh, no, that, that's the wrong one. I want this one? Yeah, that one. Didn't we do this last time? We did this last time. Okay, wow. I definitely over deleted. Uh. <laughs> F. I'm sorry! Oh, <laughs> uh, because I used the RNG. I showed the RNG on the screen so people could verify I wasn't just... You can repropose it if you want, I guess. Because apparently I just accidentally deleted way too much stuff. I like RNG'd and then I like, actually read some stuff I left in the old ones. Well, they're all gone by now, right? Alright, whatever. <laughs> Can't out, you're out of stock. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, I was just gonna roll at this. Submit your submit your request next time. Uh. What is GIMO? Oh, uh, well, it is not supposed to look like that. What the heck? That, that's more like it. <laughs> yeah, all right. What could go wrong with incense for parallels or Euler line? I think many things could go wrong. <laughs> Alright. Give people a few more moments to vote. Be right back. Okay, so I think probably the lineup for today will be... So the IMF3, then the Determinant, and then I'll probably try the Elmo one after that. Um, yeah, and then after that I might start coding, because <laughs> I'm behind on code again. I've been on, behind on code like the entire month. 
It's it's gone it's getting kind of absurd how far behind I am. That one is torture, it is. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll find out, right? <laughs> we'll find out real soon. Bum. Oh, someone's doing GFG bro. Oh. Wow, there's a button that says, give, give me money. Who is this? Daniel? I don't about the bot. I ought to integrate this, actually. Whatever. Okay. Dun, da -da. All right, welcome back, everyone. So I'm finally doing the the other geo from IMO. Uh, this is IMO Tales in Twenty One Problem Three. I hope it goes better than Problem Four because Problem Four did not go well, <laughs> which uh, makes me scared for this one. But we'll see. So you have a triangle ABC, and then D is a point on the angle. Is that angle bisector? Yeah, that looks like angle bisector. All right. Oh, why does GeoG plus six have the input bar hidden by default? That's the most important thing to not have hidden. Uh, view, input bar. Thank you. All right, so D, um, well, I'll just draw the incender, all right? A, B, C, one. Well, D is a point on line A, I, if I can read correctly. D, A, B, A, C, A, D, good. Uh, point E on segment A, C satisfies A, D, E is B, C, D. Uh, wait, what? Oh, geez, it's one of these things. <sighs> What's well, a good way to construct that? A D E equals B C D. <laughs> okay, we're gonna construct C prime, which is the rotation of C uh, by D by the angle B C D. Does that work? 
Oh, it's angle point. Okay. Through C, rotate like that. Oh, it should be the other way around. Uh, D, C, B. Like that. Haha. -ha. Okay, so E is intersect line C. D prime, line A, C. I accept that C, if the prime should be on the C, not the D. Okay, so angle, let me verify, I didn't scoot this up. A, D, E. <laughs> You're like a solid like 20 minutes late <laughs> on that one. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay, D, C, B. Uh... Crap, I screwed up somehow. Uh, really? Is this point wrong? The heck? Is this like in radiance or something? Oh my god. Um, I'd be so sad if the issue was a. This angle is in radians when the other is not or something. Okay, what what just happened? Where'd point D go? No! GLG <sighs> bruh. Okay, take two, take two. Uh Rotate. C. Angle. D. C. B. D. Like that. Oh. Yeah, I'm just rotating the wrong point because I'm stupid. Um. <laughs> okay, but now now it's going the wrong way. Um. Okay. Ha ha! It's the dumbest thing ever. Okay, and then E is like all the intersection. A, C. Okay, so B prime equals. Thank you, Dr. Calculator, for 11 months. C, B, D. Oh, I want DCP. We're rotating point A. Start with that angle through C, right? Or through B. No, through D. D, 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 D. D. Okay, so let's make sure I didn't screw that up. Oh, that does not bode well. <laughs> okay, yeah, I definitely messed that up. Uh, DBC? It should be DBC. Yeah, so they're not supposed to all be equal. Shout out to Otis from Dotted Calculator. Thank you. <sighs> All right. CBD. Okay, I think that worked. I hope. Angle C, B, D. Angle A, D, B. Prime. 30.83. Okay, everything's fine. 
Are all late applications for Otis out? Not all late applications for Otis are in. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get at least one late application every week for like... The next like six months. <laughs> Accept probability great, uh, depends on like whether I'm in a good mood or not. Frick, why won't it intersect? No, oh, just... Oh, there's no deep prime, that's the issue. Ah, oh, freaking... I... I'm getting too old for this. Okay, I finally constructed point F. <laughs> and the point X on line AC satisfies CX. Wait, what? The heck? Okay. Uh, so X equals intersect perpendicular bisector BC against line AC. There's a lot of stuff happening up north. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just add a number point at BC now, so that... Why not? Okay, so then you'd look at... These are the most random freak points of... Okay, so O1 is the... Circumcenter... Of A... D... C... And O2 is the triangle center of E. What's not even symmetric? I, I guess the problem stopped being symmetric a while ago. EXT3. <laughs> Why did I think doing this problem was a good idea? <laughs> o is E D. Or A C D. Okay, the other one is what? EDX? Jesus Christ. Okay, and I want BC, EF, O and O2. What the heck is this? Hmm. Uh, let's draw this in. Anyways. So I should probably draw the radical axis, right? Uh, let's call this like Y or something. All right, so first thing is figure out if the radical axis passes through anything useful. I feel like it might. Oh wow, I missed them both. I thought I might pass through them. Uh. So like the weirdest conditions I, I don't know what these are. Delete these these were just for construction. But I do want to draw in DE. Did I do your shout out? Oh. Shout out to I lost the game from Gaiko Lizard. Um, I 
Do I even want to know? Why? What is this? All right, we're gonna draw the circumcircle. <laughs> Shout out to the game from Dotted. Um, but but then. Okay, so I guess I'm, I should probably draw the arc midpoint, so we can change this to like Linux. I can change this to like and. These circles are so bad. Should I have this point here marked? Do I want to draw like the analogous? There's like an analogous pair of circles. Do I care about it? Because it's really weird to me that like it's symmetric up to like a certain point. Like the, the e ENF is defined symmetrically with respect to B and C, but like X is just not, and the two circles are just not. <laughs> Thank you, Dotted, for one bit. Well, I stare at this. It kind of just be sad. Do I know how to do this problem if D is the in center? It, well, if D is the in center, where do things go? Is the in center? He, he barely budges. It's like some. What is that point? It's not anything good, right? Because th so this angle is nine. ADC is ninety plus B halves. Why don't I put D all the way here? Is that infinity? Okay, so the intersection is infinity when I move it to there. Um. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that one in a while. All right. Well, I'll take a quick 30 second ad break and I will uh, stare out the window for a bit so I don't hurt my eyes from the extensive streaming.
Isn't BFC equal to angle? Wait, are they sick? Am I, am I just stupid? Why is BFC? Okay, what did I miss? Uh. Wait, how do you get that? I haven't even finished the like. <laughs> Oh, was there another one? Well, I'll do run it later. <sighs> Why is that true? I guess I can... Okay, so here's what you can do. You can use pop up point from A, right? So, AD times AC is like a certain AE times... Okay. Okay, fine. Fine, 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 fine. Well, actually, wait, that's, that's kind of weird, actually. Wait, okay, actually, the single chase is not what I... <sighs> When COVID ends. <laughs> oh, man. Sounds like people want the stream to not die, so... I'll keep streaming as long as I don't have too few viewers, I think. I'm going to regret those words real soon. <laughs> so AE is equal to AD times... How do you use the law of sides? So ADE is e equal to angle DCB. And we're dividing by... Oh, actually, that's worse. Okay, we're going to use DE. So let's just sign here over to. So that's AE. And then AF is like the same thing, except you replace stuff. So I want AE times AC to be equal to AF times A. This is weird. Um, does circle BDF go through anything good? Can I like proxy the circle through? That, that point seems pretty crappy. What about BIF? No, that can't be true. I, I don't believe that. Yeah, it's an attention. I was like, no way. Um... So I like want some relation between like Okay, wait, no, something's off. I'm gonna just move this down because I feel like this this shouldn't. There should be a good reason for this. That I'm not seeing. Uh, should I be looking at like AF? The angle that I'm given is ADE. Huh? Wait, why is this cyclic? Because this doesn't even involve the blue circles. This this is just like... I'm gonna hide this stuff for now. If this is true, this should just be true. So why... This is like angle C minus some... Blarg. So I just bash it out? I could just... Alright, we're just gonna force it out. Alright. Um. So instead of DC... 
uh, de times sine a over 2, we're going to write da times the thing, which is... Oh, but then I need the angle CDE. Ew. No, I know CDE, right? No, I don't. Evan, I'm dying on 20 BRMO from ANT. It's okay, I couldn't solve it either. <laughs> the solution is so... Oh my god. Uh, uh, uh. I, sh I don't know why I didn't solve it when I looked at... The I, don't, I don't know. Why is that cyclic? What the heck? Yeah, wrong hill to die on. Why is that cyclic? Maybe. Oh, okay, okay, no, hold on. I just need to show that A over AF is like. Wait, no, that's what I'm doing already. AEF, can I like chase that angle somehow? Yeah, that's angle B, and that's angle. Oh. What the heck is that angle? Should I like. The circle of BDC does it do something? Why is boyfriend in quotes? Do I want to know actually? I think I don't want to know. <laughs> What's wrong with having a boyfriend when you're 13? Okay, anyways. Uh... The single, the single. I feel like I should just compute this thing. Right, so... So I can like, uh, swallow the condition that D is on the A bisector into saying like a certain trick shape where equation is true. So if this is like one angle, this is another angle, this is B minus the angle, this is C minus an angle. And then trick shape is saying that, um, like this times this is equal to this times that and then at this angle gets copied over here so, okay actually i think we're just fine now okay this angle is here this angle is here you combine trick cheva with a powerpoint statement and wave your hands for a while and i think everything's fine yeah okay it's my power of a point plus trick cheva okay cool 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 Uh, okay, so claim BFEC cyclic proof, um, use trick Cheva. Yeah, 
And then... Use trick shape on the four on the four angles. Well, two angles at B and C to get the PowerPoint statement. Equals A times A C. Amazing. All right, that's great. Okay, so I definitely draw A E F then, right? If this is that's true. Uh, this circle, I'm going to color in something a little different because this circle is actually pretty important, I think. <laughs> okay, so every intersects BC is like wherever that McHill thingy my blobber is. And so now I have the great McHill picture. Da -da -da! Uh, I'm going to hide the green stuff. So we're going to call T the thing because that's what T gets called. Can I please add solutions to the unsort problems? If you write the solutions and then send them to me and seed the copyright, I will add them into the handout. If not, I will get to it eventually for some um, very generous definitions of eventually. Would you believe me if I told you, like, before, like, year three of Otis, I just didn't write solutions at all. <laughs> oh, well, if you can get someone else to write the solution and send it to me and seed the copyright to me, then I'll edit it. With credit, of course. Um... Okay, so let's out the Macau point, shall we? Q is. Oh, God, this is really annoying. Um, okay, wait, so I, I should first, because the circle is like really good, we're gonna draw its center. So, center of the red circle, I guess the circle got named D. And then intersect perpendicular line from S to line AT. So that sounds like a lot of work. Well, now you know why the solutions haven't been written up yet. Um, particular, uh, we're gonna call this, it's the Macau point, so I'm gonna call it Q. So that's the magic point that lies on like everything. Um, if I is on SQ, I'm going to be very impressed. Yeah, I was like, that's too good to be true. Uh, oh, right, the saved. Ugh. I don't get it. All I want to do is save a GeoGebra file. Why do I need to... Ah. Close. Ugh. Simo 3. <sighs> Pro gamer talks. Actually, no. I'm supposed to save this in the GeoGebra folder. Save. Okay, let's actually look at the blue circles now. Okay, so how the blue circles relate to the red triangle? That's what I want to know. Um. Maybe it gives me a way to deal with X. What is X? What's the pole? Where's the polar of X hit? Um, polar X. I I, sh I need a very very in the D. That circle is too important to be called little lowercase D. Oh, you can have the dubious distinction of being labeled lowercase G. Uh, polar X G. Is that anything? 
I feel like X should like be the inverse of something because the, I don't know. Cyclic quad is like four degrees of freedom, right? So if I draw BFEC, generally speaking, and then draw A, if I have a generic cyclic quad BFEC, then is like A anything good? I guess it's just the intersection. D, can I construct D easily? I guess that's what I want to know. So D is the point such that, oh, okay, it, it satisfies that terrible angle condition. Wait, okay, so like angle BDC plus angle EDF is 180, right? So D is almost like a point that like... Where have I seen this before? I feel like I've seen this somewhere. So I want the spiral similarity at Q to take D to a different point. Uh, and then I will get another cyclic quad. Is that true? I think that's true. So we're going to let D prime be the point such that like... How does, how, does, how does spiral similarity work? TD is tangent to BDC? Oh geez, you're way ahead of me. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. So let's find out. BTC, or BDC. Line, DT. Yeah, yeah, okay, looks like it. <laughs> So it's probably tangent to DEF too in that case, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, that's a good way to characterize it. I think this actually should fall out of the spiral similarity. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before, but I can't put my finger on exactly where. Like this thing where you have like a cyclic quad and then like this thing, like angle plus angle is 180. I feel like I've seen this somewhere, but I don't remember where. Um, oh, shoot. Okay, this line epistemically should be green, I think. This one actually should be red. This is part of the basically. Like, I think you should start with start with BCEF as like the base thing, so to speak. And then D is this point such that... What is D exactly? Playing slow down, how appropriate. BDC is tangent to DEF, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, oh, this is bugging me now. I, I, I feel like I've seen this somewhere, but I don't know where exactly. Well, I guess here, here's what we can do. We can like phantom the point D as like a point such that you get to, um, so T times TF and then TV times TC is like a certain power. So we can 
Look at the... Hang on, hang on, uh... Okay, actually, let, let me just try to do this a reasonable way. So, this angle... BDC is that copied angle. Um, this angle... BDC, this angle is equal to this angle here. From a geo handout, I think. Isogonal conjugates. So, okay. So, am I constructing an isogonal conjugate of D? <laughs> Isogonal con concubine? Well, I feel like the BFEC cyclic is asking to be trick bashed. <laughs> Just say. If I construct the isogonal conjugate of D, the problem is I don't know where what happens to like angle ADE after that. It's like some other point. It does look pretty good for... Okay, I'm gonna add the point. Uh, this is the point I want, right? This point right here. Uh, maybe that's not the point I want. <laughs> I think it is though. All right, so this angle, uh, the DBC is equal to ADF, so it gets copied here. So this triangle GFE is like, opposite orientation from BDC, but also like relies on... Oh wait, shoot, the off the orientation flipped. No! Is that supposed to happen? Hang on. Did it flip? No, it didn't. Yeah, so if I construct this point here, then D is the image of G under a spiral similarity. That's what happens. Um... There's a spiral similarity at Q that maps this green circle to this big green circle. Uh, fine. So, GFE, no, no, it is flipped. No, it flips, oh no. Uh, uh, I tried. I space them. So AGFE is similar to ADCB by like a uh, orientation flipping similarity. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
Q. Oh my god. <sighs> Alright, we're gonna I, I I'm gonna bite the bullet and add up one more point. We're gonna add D prime. D prime is the reflection of D across the orange line. Okay, so there's a direct similarity that sends GFE to D prime B C. Which means I should get uh -huh. Okay, I should just draw on B at this point, right? I've been putting it off, but I, I, well, if I have a cyclic, I actually don't like the prime. I don't like the prime very much, honestly. Um, ah, freaking. This is terrible. So... Maybe I want N. Uh, what's the spiral image of N? Well, it's called W. It's because it's an upside down M. So triangle center. So W is triangle center A E F three triangle center uh, E F three. No, that's wrong. I want I want to take the in center and then. Is that the isogonal conjugate? No, it's not. It's not even on the right side. Um, but this is the spiral image of N. Is this related somehow to D? Yeah, it's weird because we haven't touched on the blue circles. I feel like there's a lot of stuff here that I feel like I should know and don't. Because all, all this is is there's a... Ah. Really, actually? Let's 
E. I want to point D. Such that. What is D? It's like you should I should be starting with the red quadrilateral. And I I'm like start uh Okay, I'm gonna construct the feet from D, which are gonna line D, line A, B. So this, these two thingies. Is that also tangent? Is that just how it goes? I wouldn't be surprised actually if this is also a tangent. It, it, it kind of feels like it should be. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, so the reason they're tangent is that I claim they're actually both tangent to this thing. And this probably just follows by homotity at this point, right? Like there's homotity. Um, so I'm given the random angles and I want that homotity. How do I show two circles by tension? <laughs> Important questions. <laughs> I love how much chat is dedicated to solving this problem right now. <laughs> I guess everyone's done it. That's <laughs> an issue. I'm way behind. <sighs> wait, actually, this is... Wait, okay, if this is true, this just be true. What the heck am I doing? Like, I have point D, drop, drop. How can how come I don't know how to prove these are tangent? This this is not forgivable. What? Uh uh Like I, I just have A, B, C, D and the two feet. How do I not know how to show these are tangent? Wait, this is also wait, this is true? What? How come no one ever told me useful stuff like this? Are you kidding? What? <laughs> so 
So the claim is, if D is a point on the angle bisector, and I drop those two altitudes, then... Uh... Yeah, that, then like A, D, T, V, T, C. The circle with diameter A, D is tangent to... Wait, that's a circle with diameter A, D. So does this... No, wait, wait now, now I'm really confused. Does DBC have center lying on here just always? That's what this amounts to. Oh, uh, it's tangent to the circle with diameter A, D. Wait, so the center of the green is always on... Really? No, 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 I'm, I'm being scammed. Someone's scamming me. Wait, this has to be a scam, right? What is W? I forgot. That's the arc main point. No, someone's scamming me. This can't be true. <laughs> what? Wait, th this is a scam, right? Yeah, no, 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 wait, no, no. No, actually, that's not what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to show the center of this. Wait, now, now I'm just confused. Hey, am I? I'm a crazy person, right? I, I'm. Are they tangent or? Okay, they're not tangent. It just kind of looks like it. <laughs> I was like, this... I'm definitely being scared. <laughs> They're not tangent! False alarm! <laughs> okay, but these two are definitely tangent. That, that, that's not mistakable. This sucks. Okay, but like, the, the thing I have right now is literally just A, B, C, D, maybe T, and then E, F. It's like A, B, C is given, D is a point on the angle bisector, you draw E and F, construct however you feel like, and this, this apparently is just giving me a tangency that I can't prove, which is not good. Uh, like, the, this is so few points I feel like I should just be able to prove it, and I'm not seeing it. So, what am I missing? What's well, the isomeral conjugate of like G with respect to AAF? It's a point that satisfies the tangency, right? It probably doesn't lie on the circle anymore? Where, where does... Okay, so where does G go? Or where does D go under the spiral similarity? Uh, no, it does lie on the circle. Wait, what? 
But I thought it was a sign of conjugate. Oh, that's something else. Um, that, that's a different point. So if I take the isogonal conjugate of D, I get some other point here, and then this angle, this angle maps to... Where did they, where those angles go? They go to like a thing there and a thing there. Okay, let's construct a stupid isogonal conjugate. D prime is the intersection of the line through B and the reflection of D across the line BI with the line AI. Ow. Illegal number of arguments. One. Alright, what did I screw up? Where'd it go? Okay, so let's see how I'm going to conjugate. And the point is that if I... Those look related to, are those related to the midpoints? No. Actually, that circle is probably good to keep around anyways, though. Because I know I need that perpendicular bisector. Uh, what is... Okay, um, we're gonna let f prime be the intersection of a, b, and like the line through line through d prime parallel to d f. So what you do, what I'm doing is I'm taking this green thing, this green circle, which I am confused about, and I am creating this parallel thing. DF, D prime F. Okay, so now, um, oh, actually, that's how you prove it's cyclic. <laughs> what happens is this parallel thing has the property that, like, A D prime is tangent to this circle, BF prime D prime, because of the angles. So A D prime squared is A F prime times A B. Okay, so that's actually how you get the cyclic without trick. Uh, the question is, can I also get the tangency out of this? What do I want? Um, If I pick a random point D prime, that uniquely determines an F prime such that the angle thing holds and an E prime. And then DAF is like the homotopy image of that. Right? I feel like there's some sort of duality here I'm not using or something. Thank you, Rage Time D31, for the FOMO. It is true that d prime e prime f prime is t will probably be tangent to b d prime c prime as well, but it's weird because the point that you get is like 
The E prime F prime should meet somewhere else, right? It's like you have this parallel thingy. But somehow I feel like I um No no no, wait, it's not quite symmetric. Thank you, XYC U L A I for the follow. Okay, I should actually construct the other one because I feel like this is doing something well. Okay, so E prime is line through So I have this green thing, and then this one of the green circles is homothetic to the other one. But now I also have these two side circles: circle D prime F prime. Jesus Christ! Circle D prime E prime C. These circles are sort of generating. These circles are tension to each other, somehow. I don't know why. Okay, no, I, I know why, but it feels weird. Um. <laughs> So what, do I construct the other two? So there's a circle G1, which is circle B, C, E prime. God, there's seven million circles now. Uh, let's color this green. And there's circle D prime. I want to hide this one for now. That is so much stuff. Holy crap. Uh, go away, you two. You can go away for a moment. Invert around D. Are you serious? No. Yeah, that sounds like it might work, actually. I, I was thinking, like, I have these two circles, like these two kind of dash dish circles. And... I want to show that they're like. What do I want to show? Hang on. It's like there's a multi that sends here to here, and there's a uh, something that does something else to something. <laughs> Actually, it's also a multi like from here to. Is it a multi? No, it's not. God, freaking, um, I think you're right about the homotherapy. 
Um, Because it takes the DBC to BD. I just got an email from my school that says that it is paramount to engage your heart's mind and will and I'm too afraid to question that motive. Uh, it probably just means they sent you some propaganda. That's probably all. So this goes here with a certain scale factor. It's like, okay, how do I relate this one and this one though? The this is not Am I, am I just being that stupid? I think I'm just being a stupid head. This shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, okay, if I want to show their tangent, I need like EFD plus DBC to equal CDE. Right? That's what it means for dude to have circles to be tangent. I draw tangent too well. Okay, so I want EDC. I think I'm just being a stupid head. There's this, this there's no way this is hard because there's so few points. So like I'm still doing the part that doesn't involve the X and Y and whatever. So EFD, EFD plus Oh shoot. DFE C D E plus C B D. That's that. That's the goal, and EFD is GED, EGD, CBD is. We'll take that as the base angle, or should I transfer it? I think we'll transfer it. That's equal to like G D F. So that's equal to So that's equal to dark arc D E plus arc G F. Whatever the heck that is. On that thing. Meanwhile, directed angle C D E is something uh what is cd how did i define e again uh i guess i don't actually have good access to the angle <laughs> I, I maybe should use a different one should i use like gtc or something I think I should use GDC. I don't think I should involve my D. Uh, GDC, CDG, whatever. 
tomato, tomato. Uh, Jesus Christ. I'm so glad I'm not a kid at this IMO. Because CD, so I want this, I want this to be equal to that arc plus uh, DFG or something like that. Do I have control of CDG? It's, okay, well, C CDG, I guess, is like... It's, it's the sum of two smaller angles. It's ACD plus angle DAC, and angle DAC is known because it's half angle A. And meanwhile, DFG is like... DFG is... Some, some random thing. Uh, okay, meanwhile... CDG... Wait, what, what did I just compute? But I, I want to just not have stuff involving G. Which I should be able to, because G is like the image of a certain thing image you're going to homothity. Right? We agreed that EFG and... Oh my god. I think I'll just do that. Oh, CDG is CDN is... DAC plus angle ACD, that's fine. And the other side, CBD is CBD. Some board A. And then DFG is EFE. Plus EFG. So I, I should be able to get this without G in it, right? So DFE is DGE. Like, like, like. Like, we agreed that DFE is DGE. EFG is, is still EFG. We agreed that the G thingy is inversely similar. Wait, I feel like this is circular. I I'm confusing something, right? I don't... If I define G to be the point such that the two triangles are inversely similar, I don't... I'm not promised G lies on line AD. That's what I want to prove. How did you come up using model 2019 one? I told you, I literally woke up from a dream that I was grading functional equations, and then when I woke up, I wrote down the FE I was grading, and it was using model one. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. It, it was kind of a strange experience. Okay, why is G on line 80? Because if line, G is on line 80, then this angle chase works, and then I get the thing I want. Um, but I'm really confused now. <laughs> no, 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 we, we know it lies on there. What am I doing? The angles are given, so it lies on there. Okay. Uh, does it? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you do is you let DA meet at a point G. Um, okay, no, I'm just being stupid. So that means I can carry out this angle chase. And then... DGE Oh, maybe I can't I'm confused. <laughs> no, yeah, I literally saw an image. I, I, I was grading this FE, and then when I woke up, I wrote down the FE that I was uh, I was grading in the dream. 
and that hit. Then I was like, oh, this is actually a problem. And then I turned it in. Um, the least effort I ever put into writing a problem. Uh... Oh no. <laughs> How do I compute that angle? <laughs> uh... Does it help if I know that the... Why, why, why can't I do this? So I know to use the similarity thingy. How long have I been spending on this? It's almost two hours, Jesus Christ. Uh, see, this is what I mean when I say I'm getting too old to do Geo now. Geo is only something that works when you're young, and then once you grow old, people tell you to stop doing Geo, and then you get bad at Geo. D. D prime BC, how is that real? Okay, so. D prime BC should be tied into here somehow, but I don't see exactly how. DBC, DBC. We transfer the angles, so now this angle's here, this angle's here, corresponds to this angle over here, which corresponds to this angle over here. So. Okay, so uh, well, I, what I should be saying is like AFEG is. Okay, I, I, uh, 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 <laughs> um. It's like AEFG is similar indirectly to A, B, C, D. Right? Like, these, this quadruple is sim inversely similar to that one directly. And this should... I, I I think this is literally enough to get the thing I'm trying to prove. Like, there's no way... Actually, there's no way it's not enough, because that's all the points in the picture. But somehow I can't get it. I, I don't know what, what I'm blanking on. Like they, they they should just be similar. Like I I, I don't see what else. <sighs> I haven't even gone to the meat of the problem yet. Like this just be true, right? Uh, I, uh, they're they're inversely similar, and D and G are on the angle bisector. So I. I, what, what am I? Why, why can't I get the detail down? Okay, wait, I'm just gonna draw this on paper. Um.
Do I care about the center? Um... Okay, so I want like a, a, um, what, what the heck? Okay, what if I invert it? What if I just invert it A? So there's like a reflected inversion that sends F to C and then E to B and G to D. Right? No, 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 no. No, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Like A E times A C is A F times A B. Is A. G time. Or not D, um, AG times A, whatever the heck, all the way down there is. Um, also AD. Wait, is it true that AD... I think I'm just a buffoon. I'm just a buffoon. Um... Yes? No? What? Oh my god. Okay, it's D prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, that goes there. Fine. Okay, so I really want a tangency at D prime. Um, the isogonal conjugate to D prime. Yeah, that's that's just the same thing. I just transferred it somewhere else though.
No, it's not quite the same though, right? Because you have a... Because now this angle is a different one. You control this angle, you control that angle. So... Oh my god. Hi, I'm dying on IMO3. Like, there's something that's true, and I'm pretty sure that I should just be able to prove it, but I can't prove it because I suck at inversion. Uh, so, it, it's just sort of pain. Um, oh, come on. This is ridiculous. How, like, if this is true, it should just be true. So how can I be stuck on this? What exactly are you stuck on? I know, I want to show DEF and DBC are tangent. That's literally it. And I can't prove it. <laughs> like this this green circle and this green circle. So I haven't even gotten to the point X and Y yet. I just want DEF and DBC to be tangent. And somehow it's not working. I have BCEF cyclic. Um, and I have like a bunch of other junk drawn in. But I can't get this like fact that seems like it should be like not the meat of the problem. Because it doesn't use X and Y yet. Uh... So I don't know what the heck I'm missing, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I, what, what's wrong, going wrong with this. Like, this, this should be pretty... If this is true, it should be pretty straightforward. That's what I thought, but it's been like an hour and I'm still staring at this being like, what, what am I not seeing? <laughs> have you tried angle chasing? I have. I couldn't get it to work, somehow. Like, I feel like you should just be able to angle chase it. But I can't. <laughs> and so I've just kind of been, like, squaring at this for a while, being like, what the heck? Like, well, why does this work? Uh... Thank you, Muck Riles, for the phone. I have this circle, I flip it around the angle bisector and dilate it by some random factor so that... Like, like what the heck? How can I, how, how can I not prove this? Yeah, yeah, it's not perpendicular to AD. The center is somewhere like on. I've been thinking about drawing the centers of the two green things for a while, actually, but I don't. I'm, I'm just mad. <laughs> is the main thing. I'm just like, how, how is this not easy?
Like, there's nothing happening. Like, how can this not just die? There's literally six points in the picture. It's like A, B, C, D, E, F. That's it. And I can't get the tangency. <sighs> what if I compute the angle between... that thing and the other thing. What if I do the green line versus black line? Like line T, so I look at just one of the, bo the bottom green circles, say. So D is a point that's on the angle bisector and I calculate the... the angle between... Is that, is that gonna work? It's called it though, right? Because that angle is... Um, Is there a condition I need to keep track of? I don't think there is. Ah, <sighs> that's ridiculous. This is how you know I'm old. Um, okay, so the angle between this black line and the tension here is equal to the measure of this arc GD. And then this one is equal to the my arch measure of arc like D whatever thing here. And then because of the flippy tangency thing, this arc equals that arc. Done! 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 <sighs> Why did that take an hour? We're gonna take a quick ad break while I, I don't know, reconsider my life decisions. I hit everything. I don't know what this says about me. It's saying something, but I don't know what. I know it's easy. That's a problem. It's not like, oh, I, I don't know what the proof should look like. I know the proof is supposed to be one line because there's only six points and they're like set up in a way such that like you can't do anything tricky with them. So I know what the proof is supposed to look like. And I just somehow like couldn't get it. And it's like, dude, these circles are like reverse similar. So this arc plus this arc is 180. That's it. God. Uh. Well, see, that one has a condition that doesn't make any sense, right? Like that, like I am a 2018-6 has like this garbage condition. This is not, this is literally like, like the two things are similar. That's the condition. Like EFG, AEFG is similar to ADCB. Show these two circles are tangent. What? Oh my God. I haven't really tried it. I didn't like it, honest. I remember I solved every problem on the 2018 shortlist except that one, and I didn't try that one because I was like, I I think this looks boring. Did you invert to solve it? No, I just I just used like 
similarity. <laughs> like, these two green circles are inversely similar. Like, they're, they're similar after a reflection around the bisectors. Like, GE... AGEF is similar to ADCB by construction. And then, um... That implies this arc plus this arc is 180, so they're tangent. That's it. I don't, I don't know what I was, what the hell I was doing with like this stupid circle and this stupid segment and that stupid segment and this other circle that I didn't use and this other circle I also didn't use and this circle I didn't use and this point that I didn't use and that point that I didn't use and also like the blue circles that we haven't touched yet and this Mikhail thing that I didn't use either. And, okay, so okay, we we can actually start doing the problem now because I'm I've stopped clowning, uh, is what I'm trying to say. <sighs> okay, so O1 and O2 suck, but I think I know what you're supposed to do with them, um, right? Because this is saying it's a perpendicular bisector of dy. So what I need to show is that ty has the same power, like ty is equal to te times tf or whatever. It's this, this point T is controlling everything, I think. And it has equal power to red, green, 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 red. I guess I want AQ back. Um, so it's this blue one. I want to show this blue thing has the same power. Um, what do you think is the best IMO? Like that actually showed up on the IMO? Uh, huh. I feel like the problems I like never get voted on. <laughs> like, off the shortlist. Uh, you wanted me to pick a synthetic geo? I think off my head I would say 2011-6. As, like, my favorite classical geo that actually got used. But I think there were a lot of, like, geo problems that I liked in recent shortlists that didn't make the IMO. The problem is that this intersection is so random. I think the point Y is the key to the problem though, right? Is There's probably another thing that Y lies on, I want to say. Because I feel like intersecting these two things is just like garbage, right? Like I want to take these blue circles in isolation. So if I want to isolate the blue circles, I need to find a different property of Y. Like define Y without referencing either blue circle. And then individually show that it lies on the um, each blue circle. Okay, let's find out. Line Y Q. Hey, is that a right angle? Really? It's almost too good to be true. I almost don't believe that. Um, yeah, that feels too good to be true. Yeah, definitely not. What is the polar of Y with respect to the main circle? That's also, that doesn't look good. Actually, no, I don't think those are concurrent. Uh, that's also not gonna, yeah. Ah, frick. Twenty twelve five is nice. Come on, where is it? There has to be another. I, I I think there has to be another property, right? There's otherwise you can't control the oh, stupid. D prime. Oh, I think that's a miss. I don't think that's gonna pass through. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been good. Uh.
Will you do another one? It depends on, like, whether I get through this. <laughs> and how tilted I am. I'm already very tilted, so... What are these random as heck points? I guess like okay, actually D E D E X. What the heck is X doing? Like D and E, I can understand because you know A E F G sort of plays a symmetric role to A D C B. So the, those two things are like like basically symmetric. Doesn't matter which one you pick, but that X doesn't make any sense. Does DCX do anything important? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it. If I switch E and F, and I don't, I don't freaking know. A, D prime. Mm -hmm, mm A Q, A Y. So the measure of angle A Y T is like Y Q A. I want Y. So Y Q A should be equal to A Y T, whatever that happens to be equal to. Um, A Y T. This is just. I feel like there has to be another circle. I can't do this though, because that point is so badly defined. I don't think it'll work though. No. Where else? I feel like there should be another line or circle or something.
I guess I should draw in all the circles to see if any of them do something good. YBC is actually the main one I'm thinking of. But I don't think it passes through any other points of interest. Uh, there's a lot of things of the shape to try though. Like basically because there's so many... <sighs> circle... D... Y... Or EFY is the other one to look, I should look at. It also doesn't seem to do anything useful, though. Oh, hmm. Um, I should draw the other tangent, right? So if I call this, if I call the point um, K, which is the section polar intersection of line dy with the polar of t with respect to uh what did i call the screen circle i'll just i'll just inline it d e f why didn't that work Hello? Okay, where did it go? Oh shoot. <laughs> uh, I see, that's why it didn't work. Uh, that that's not that's not how you do it. Um I want K as the reflection of D across the line through T and the uh, center of that circle. Can I click it? What? Fuck. Uh, DY is the polar, is the point. Uh, like, I won't, because I already have freaking, ugh, delete. What is this line? Delete. Reflect for D across the line through T and the center of the circle through D, E, F. Okay. What do you mean under- what? what? Jesus Christ! Nothing's working today. I'm really tilted. <laughs> TK is 7TK. All right. Well, I guess we just have new colors now. Uh, okay, so you draw the other tangent is the point. And then I basically DK is going to wait, is it? I thought that DKY should be collinear by homothity. Is that not true? Uh, maybe that's not true when I'm clowning. I think I'm clowning. Never mind. Why, is, why did I draw that point? Okay, but either way, there's a homothity of some sort. And. Because I want to grow this green circle to a circle that's like clicks up there. So this is maybe not the point I want. Oh, I think I want this intersection. Yeah, so that point here. So I. Oh, hmm. That's not. Amazing. So if GT is collinear, then I have my way though. GTK? Maybe? Oh, I think that might work. Fuck. <laughs> that was too good to be true. All right. 
Uh, I tried. It's not GTK. So what's K? Do I not grow the green circle? And you're off announced then. What's the difference? Between what? Oh, I mean, I don't care. I'm just used to typing the curly braces because otherwise sometimes things mess up. Okay, so how did I get that point Y? I, I really wanted to be the image of some homothetic thingy. But it's not great, because like the uh, TD equals TK condition doesn't scale well on your homothety, right? I guess I could like, construct a homothetic image of T. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I kind of was I was I was kind of just bu being a buffoon for like an hour. So now we're actually starting the problem. <laughs> Today is not a good day at all. What am I supposed to do with the blue circles? Well, so for I'm a 2012 5, I think what happens is like there's two circles that you should draw because they're sort of forced on you. Like the circle with center to A passing through two of the points and circle center to B. And whenever you have a intersection of like a line with a circle, you should consider drawing the other intersection. So I think 2012 5, if you have the right instincts, isn't, doesn't require much magic. 
you, you need to make like two observations that are both observations you should be able to get. And then, then what happens is you look at the picture and are like, oh crap. <laughs> it's cyclic. Um... Yeah, the BRMO problem bound is not tight at all. Right. Anytime you feel you see like there's a there's something where it's defined as like a line intersect a circle, you should feel very uncomfortable and should be looking at the second intersection to see if that point comes into play as well. Because lines and circles normally are supposed to intersect at two points. It's very unnatural to only use one of them. Usually this means the other intersection is something either that has the same property or has some special property. I have no idea. I don't know what the blues. <laughs> I'm just tilted because it took me like two hours to get to this point where I can actually start working on the problem. And now I don't actually want to do anything. Yeah, and the problem is just starting. <laughs> uh, what the heck are. What is ACD? What are these points? Like, I guess I draw the orthogonal circle. D, D. But... Wait, does that circle also pass through D prime? What the heck? Wait, really? It also passes through the orthogonal conjugate? Oh, I guess so. Because if you repeat the same argument, then... The tangent... No. No, it doesn't. What? Why is it past through D prime? Uh huh. Okay, so maybe I should just invert at T and pray that like the blue circle and the two blue circles are coaxial or something. But why is it past through D prime? When I look at D prime, I thought we agreed that it didn't pass through D prime because E prime and F prime were like, oh no! See, I deleted them because I was mad. Now I need them back. Uh, but it's like, like, wait, what? Okay, I, I think I'm being scammed again. Why does Master D prime? Excuse me. This is geometry, yes. Yes. It's geometry. <laughs> Which I'm too old to be doing, but I'm doing anyways. It's for the kids. Why is D prime also there? I feel like I'm learning a lot about isogonal conjugates with points that lie on the angle bisector today.
So there's an inversion at T, which swaps C with B, fixes D. Well, it fixes the whole green circle, fixes both the green circles. Um, where does it... So I guess it sends A to Q, right? So I should actually be looking at a circle... So if CQAY is cyclic, then the other cyclic thing is BDQY, right? That circle's gonna be so large. Yep, all right. And the other circle in play is DEY, which goes to DFY and some random freaking something. Um, I don't know where the heck X goes. Well, I got the circle I was asking for. It's BDQY. Um, so I'm gonna define BDQY, ADCY, get this yellow thing, because their inverse is under thing, so TY, and good. So now I have, yeah, I want BDQY. So I want the, I should just define it that way, I guess. It's, it's this point here, and I'll just keep in mind that BDQY are cyclic, because that circle is not drawable, I think. Uh, it's just not. <sighs> Can I hide this stupid bar on the left. I think that bar is in the way. Okay, so BDQY are cyclic. That's what I would need to hold in my head. Actually, it's this giant, enormous blue circle, which I will just draw blue with dots. This is a solid nine now. It's part of the whole blue thing. This yellow is the circle I'm inverting around. <laughs> So I'm going to, okay, BDQY and CDAY intersect somewhere. That's the solid thing that I wanted. And now the question is, what the heck is that point X? I still don't know why D prime lies on the yellow circle. I'll figure that out later if I need it. So to understand where X is going, I want to construct its inverse with respect to the yellow circle. So I forgot what I call the yellow circle. What is it? Who are you? It's called P. That's a terrible name for a circle, but I'm out of creativity. So X prime is the intersection of line TX with the X polar with respect to P. So this is X prime. I need to figure out why is X prime here. What? Who is X prime and what does it want from me? It's prime. So first let me make sure I haven't screwed up and that these four are indeed cyclic. Good, they are. This is the circle I want now. is x prime so literally how is x prime defined it's like ac so it's like the second circle of tab and it's this perpendicular bisector that i don't really know much about maybe hang on actually maybe i do know a little bit about it okay so what's the inverse of m <laughs> this circle, I, I should actually have this circle solid, right? And because I want to say it to find it this way, and then this circle is dotted because this is the unknown circle that I don't have. So I wanted to find it this way uh, BDQY, uh, CDA, the other circle. And I want to show that X, D, E, Y are cyclic. So I don't think X is better under inversion if I'm not, if I know what I'm doing. I feel like I've almost, I kind of want to draw this point, this other intersection point. Okay, I'll take my own advice because anytime I see circle intersect, I want to see what the intersection is, it doesn't do anything. Uh, so we're going to intersect them. Um, I'm going to call it Z.
Okay, so... Where, where is the inverse of Z with respect to the green, the critical... She is the... I don't know which circle is more fundamental at this point. I'll just try them all. Doesn't hurt. That's off the screen. Um, mm. Which angles do I control? I really want the circles to be coaxial, right? How do you show things are coaxial? Um, I've done this before. Like what you do is... I want to find a point that has the same power with respect to x, d, e. And the other thing. So I should be looking on the radical axis for a point that I have good control over. Um, where might that be? Right, so this is the critical radical axis. We're trying to go coaxial so I don't have to think too hard about the point Y, because Y is not that. This point, how well behaved do I believe? This sucks. Um, this is DAC. This is BDY. DQ. Ugh. Can I get control over this point? Is that a thing I can do? I feel like this point doesn't feel that good to me. Or I can compute the power from X and the power from M and, like, pray. <laughs> that is also an option. I don't really want to do that, though. AD seems like the best line, actually. But the problem is that... Uh... <laughs> yes, the bound 2000... Yeah, the bound is very bad. It's part of why it's in the indie problem unit. Honestly, given how hard I was cloning the for the first two hours, I don't think I deserve to solve this problem at this point. <sighs> Honestly.
What? No. Yeah, no. Um. What the heck is the point? Let's say times X C. Add crypto to napkin. That would require me to know any crypto be beyond RSA. I don't know elliptic curve cryptography, sorry. <sighs> What's your PhD on? Um it looks like it's going to be something about automorphic forms. I don't know yet because I haven't even passed my qualifying exams because I've been away from school since the pandemic started. Um, but when I get back in about one week, um, then my life is going to turn into, oh crap, I need to learn what an automorphic form is so I can pass my quals. <laughs> also, I need to learn what lead groups and algebras are. I still haven't figured those things out yet. I just need to read this. The the algebra part should be okay. I just need to read Karolov's book and like pretend I know what's going on. But the automorphic forms for it might be more challenging. <laughs> <sighs> See, I think there's this thing where like because I wrote the napkin, people think I know math. And like <laughs> I wish. You should talk to the people in my department. They're the ones that actually know what that. <sighs> Meanwhile, this problem. I am done with this problem, honestly. I don't. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with X. Why are you planning to do your PhD on automorphic forms if you don't know what they are? Well. You see. I, w I decided I wanted to like learn number theory during my PhD because like I probably could if I wanted to like you know, just do random combinatoric stuff for my PhD but I didn't really want to. I felt like I wouldn't get very much out of it. And in number theory the two professors at MIT who were like taking people at the time were like Wei Zhang and Bjorn Poonen. Uh, but Bjorn important does algebraic geometry type of number theory and I have learned the hard way that I do not get along with algebraic geometry and so the other professor was Wei and when I learned modular forms I did not smash my head against the book I was reading this was not true for algebraic geometry so now modular forms it is um, that's basically how it happened. <laughs> also, Wei was really nice to me, which helped a lot. I think Wei is probably, like, one of the nicest professors in the math department that I've, like, met. By a lot. <laughs> so, pro tip, if you are a professor, and you don't want to advise PhD students, just be less nice, and you won't have PhD people who want to work with you. Why not say algebra? I don't know. I guess I just kind of always wanted to do number theory. I feel like I couldn't let it go or something. Even though I am like increasingly worried that I'm like not cut out for it. But um 
I feel like if I like went away from number theory, I'd always have this like lingering like, you know, well, maybe you could have managed to pull it off. Because I'm not... I'm not really an abstract theory kind of person. Um, is is this, is this sort of just the philosophy, like... Like, proving, proving results in commutative algebra just doesn't excite me. It's a lot of why, like, I wasn't a good fit for algebraic geometry or arithmetic geometry. Whereas, at least with modular forms, like, when you first start out, there's, like, already some things you can, like, see happening, right? You can compute how many modular forms there are of a given weight. You can see Ramanujan's tau function show up and, like, do magical multiplicative stuff. And so on. It's kind of a weird field, but like at least it felt like a little more like there was substance. Whereas when I was learning algebraic geometry, I just felt like I saw words and like there were more words. And then after that, there were more words. And I was just like, I, I don't know why I'm studying any of this. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I just think it far enough. That's possible too. Um, see your rage game. What about. Extreme. Okay, what is like college level combo? There's two flavors. One is like algebraic combinatorics type thing. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, basically like the, the the kind of like combinatorics that's about equal signs, like things that are pretty strictly rigid, is like Postnikov and like Richard Stanley's domain. And then there's like extremo slash analytic combinatoric type things, which are more about asymptotics, and. I mean, here, here's a story, all right? When I was an undergrad, Yuhei Zhao was teaching a class on extremal graph theory and additive combinatorics. And Yuhei Zhao, I mean, if you're in Olympiad circles, you probably, like, kind of know who he is, right? Like, he was involved with the Canada IMO for a while. He was supposed to be the head of problem selection. No, not problem selection. He had some chief coordinator, I think it was, for the IMO. So, something related to that, until the USA realized that it couldn't host the IMO because it had no money. Um... So I was just like, okay, well, if Yufei is teaching the class, I guess maybe I should go see what it's about. Because Yufei has well, like, a reputation as like a super, super popular teacher. Like he, get, he, he has classes he teaches where he has like unanimous perfect ratings. Like at the end, you know how there's a survey at the end of each course where you like rate the professor or whatever. And he, he's like had classes where it was like unanimous perfect. Like he didn't lose any points on any students. Um, anyways, so I went to the class. And the one thing I learned from that class is that I am never touching extremo combinatorics or additive combinatorics again because holy crap, I do not get that stuff. Um, like, <laughs> it, it was not even close. I was like completely dead after like the third lecture. Um, I was just like, well, okay. And the problem was that I was only signed up for three classes, which was the minimum that you can sign up for if you are an undergrad and be considered a full-time student. And if you sign up for less than three classes at MIT, you get uh, you are on what's called light load, which means you are not a full-time student, you are a part-time student. And this sounds bad until you realize that it has no detrimental effects other than the fact that you pay less tuition. <laughs> um, so... If you ever have the option to do that, I and like it won't hurt. I guess it might hurt your financial aid package too. But if you can do that without like hurting your financial aid package, you should totally do it because it means you can be a student and just pay less money. Uh, unfortunately, my parents, I don't think, understood this. I like tried to explain this to them and they didn't get it. And they were like, no, you have to be a full time student. What do you mean part time student? So I couldn't drop the class, even though I had no clue what was going on because I was already in the minimum number of classes. So. I had to like sort of drag myself through um, kicking and screaming through the rest of the class and sort of like beg people to like tell me how to do the homework because I couldn't do anything uh, until I like eventually got like enough points to like pass the class. And after that experience, I was like, yeah, this, this, I'm sorry, extremo combo is not for me. That's what I've learned. <laughs> um. Okay, I think I'm done with this problem. I don't. I don't think I'm getting it today. Um, 
I think this is the first stream we got zero problems, though. Because I don't really want to do the determinant one if it's not quick at this point. <laughs> That's fine. I, I think after the clownery, that was the first two hours of the stream. I totally deserve to not get any problems today. Because holy crap, that was not acceptable. <laughs> uh, just pass? Or did you ace it? Okay, so it depends on what you mean by ace it. What you have to understand is that um, when you are an undergrad, when you are an early undergraduate, or if you are uh, in high school, um, if you don't try in your classes, you don't get an A because you know there, there's there's a grading system. And after a while, people stop caring about grades because it's like I don't know, you're like 23. Who gives a crap about grades anymore? So the grading system is basically like A, A minus. And then like B question mark, and then like didn't show up. It's basically how most grad math classes are graded. Um, so th there are obviously some exceptions, but for a lot of math grad classes, if you like put any effort at all, by which I mean you like you know turn in all the homework, it's pretty hard to not get an A. <laughs> Anyways, so I got like an. I think I eventually got an A minus, I want to say, for getting like half the points in the class or something like that. Like that's what I mean about like it's it was either like half or seventy percent. It was some threshold like that. That's that's what I mean when I say like <laughs> it's pretty hard to knock an A if you like try. Um, I'm pretty sure I've taken classes where like there was no homework and the grade was a constant function and the constant was A. Um. Like, the grading function was a constant. Like, it had no inputs. <laughs> I was like, okay, this sounds good to me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's... I, I think it's just, like, graduate math departments don't care about grades because if you are... If you are taking a math PhD, um... They kind of just assume that you're you're like going to do your work yourself without like having like someone yell at you to do it because if that's not true you're not going to do well on the PhD anyways. Um. So you know, it's just kind of like you know grades are for little kids, okay? Grades are for like little kids where like if the like they they if you don't give them a grade they won't do the work. Um. By the time you're like twenty three, like it's, it's it's okay, like. No one's taking classes because they have to at this point. Well, okay, some people still are, but like, not that many. Um. I watched the entire time. Thank you for <laughs> suffering through these last Three hours with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. This 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 is actually the record. Uh, normally, I get at least like one problem per stream. This is, I think this is the first time where I didn't get any problems because I. <laughs> Thank you, Martello, for the follow. <laughs> Well, okay, sorry. I should clarify, the statements that I made are for the math department. If you are in a department that's not math, it might not be true that people don't care about grades. But in math, like... Like, come on. Like, it, it's math. Like... The only people who do math PhDs are supposed to be people who want to do math anyways. Um... In theory. And then... I mean... The, the math PhD completion rate is actually quite low, I think. It, like, sort of because I think a lot of people like go in and then after a while they just realize that like math isn't interesting enough for them to like want to compete in math. Because math research is like, math research is probably the like most competitive thing you could in academia. Actually, I, I, I shouldn't say that because I don't know other fields that well. I will say math academia is 
um, notoriously competitive is at least a true statement. Um, because when you are trying to prove results, you are trying to prove a result that no one else has proven before. And there are two ways you can do this. You can prove results that no one cares about, which is a thing you can do. You can do even if you're an undergrad. That, that's a thing that's possible even if you're an undergrad. Um, or you can prove results that people care about, in which case you are competing against everyone who's cared about that result. So it's just sort of brutal. Um, <laughs> Like, if, if, anyone you talk to will be like, I don't think I'm good enough for this because, like, there's so-and-so person that's just, like, way better than a... Like, I, I don't know anyone who thinks they're like, oh, yeah, I feel pretty good about this. Every, everyone is just like, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this because if I really cared about proving this result, the best way to do it would be to ask this person who is way better than me to prove it for me. And they do it in, like, a tenth of the time. Um, you know. Yeah, that feels a nightmare. <sighs> I guess this is after hours now. Um, which is fine, I guess. Yeah, people think math competitions are competitive and I laugh at them. Like, if you think math competitions are competitive, wait till you see research. It's not even close. Grapes are so good. Yeah, that problem is amazing. <laughs> a minus B, A squared minus B squared, A cubed minus B cubed. <laughs> I gotta tell you the story about that problem. Um, I found that problem while surfing AOPS, and the attribution for that problem was something like inspired by Evan Chen. And when I stared at it for a long time, being like, I don't remember making this, and I don't see how you solve this problem. And then I read the solution, and I was like, oh, oh okay, I know. <laughs> Let's, 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 uh, I'm not spoiling that. But this problem's too hilarious for me to spoil. Ask on the server. Um. No, because the problem with math, the thing about math Olympiads is like, even though you're competing by score, um, if you solve the problem, you get the points for it, right? Like. Like, there's a test, and then there's, like, an easy, medium, and hard problem. If you get the easy problem, then, you know, you get the seven points for it. Math, if math, if math competitions were, like, math research, it would be more like you have a room of people, and there's, like, a hundred Olympiad problems, and then only the first person to, like, solve a solution, solve a problem gets the seven points for it. That's what the... <laughs> right? Like, you know, if five people could have 42 at the IMO, they're all happy. They, they all get a gold medal. In research, like, then that's not how it works. You, you can only have one person per problem. Like, okay, like, yes, there is some offsetting because, like, you know, it's not literally like you have a cut and dry problem. I know that. But the issue is that this is, like, more than outweighed by the fact that, like, your work counts for zero if anyone else did it before you. Just, like, in, in any form. Yeah, if Olympiads were fresh structured like that, no one would do it, right? Because part of the whole point of Math Olympiads is that it's not just a talent selection system. It is a talent development system. So you can go to the Olympiad and be like, okay, you know, I could get problem one and four, and then I had some ideas for two, but I didn't solve it. So you can, you know, you got something, you have something to work on, and you you keep improving. Uh, and like, <laughs> in real life... In real life, we don't give you easy problems just so that we you can feel like you're improving, you know? <laughs> it was a bucket puts the fire off. 
<laughs> there exists solution. No, it's, it's just a dumb joke about like how <laughs> how how people in these professions operate. Yeah, they are different. Um, one of them is less fun. <laughs> it's my opinion. Also, one of them is much harder, but that's that's not even the main difference, I think. Right, like one of them has been designed so that it's like fun to work on, then the other is like just whatever the heck people haven't managed to solve yet. All right, I need to finish up Banty tonight. Have fun! Anti worst unit. Fight me. <laughs> well, actually, moving points is worst unit. Sorry, let me correct that. Doesn't he eat a sweet pickles or twinkle toes? Yeah, at least they tried. Like you should, like you know, how much of an effect do you think that like Farmer John has on the Yusuko? It's probably like more than zero, right? <laughs> huh? I mean, I I don't think it's a leading term, but it's like not zero either. Oh, that's so trippy. <laughs> the green screen looks worse if my screen is black compared to its white because there's so little lighting in this room that, like, the light from my monitor makes a difference. <laughs> I can't wait till I'm back in Boston and I have the photography lights again. It looks so bad without the photography lights. It's okay now. Uh, but, like, if the screen is black, apparently it just looks awful. It's the monitor is the light. <laughs> All right. It looks like people are dropping off, so I'll probably just adjourn here. Um, thanks for coming through. Congrats on getting to... We finally had a stream with zero solves, guys. <laughs> it finally happened. I'm surprised it didn't happen earlier, honestly, given... That, like, there's some days where I'm just, like, really tired and I just can't do anything. Today was actually not one of those days. I don't feel that tired. I was just, like, not seeing a step and no one was helping me out <laughs> presumably because everyone's done the problem already because it's IMO3 so 
Oh, that was an experience. See you. Uh...